What's going on guys? Nick here for Spin Fuels Daily Vape TV and today we're going to be taking a look at the Kindred 1.5 by the Council of Vapor. So before we get into the review, I just want to give a huge shout out to Eve E-Liquids for sending me this device. They are the main distributor for Council of Vapor products, so make sure you stop by their, their website for more information on this device. I'll have a link for you right in the description. Um, so before we get into the close-up view, I want to go over some of the newer specs on this uh, mod here. Uh, let's just take it out of the bag, and here we go. It's obviously smaller, slimmer, trimmer, 22 millimeter in, in width this time, and a much shorter in uh, height. Uh, pretty similar construction, it's still made out of that same brushed finish stainless steel with brass accents. Um, let's just take off this top cap here. Uh, they do have uh, silver plated copper contacts um, all throughout this whole device which is great. Uh, eliminates a lot of the uh, voltage drop and it also gives you great conductivity. All the threads are buttery smooth including the 510 connection and the two section tube here. Uh, it does come with two se separate tubes, but you really can't tell because the machining is just absolutely gorgeous on this thing. So once you uh, tighten this top piece down to the, the uh, bottom, there you go. You have to look really close in order to see that difference. And I'll show you that in a bit more detail when you get up to the close-up portion. Um, other than that, they have added a C-clip in the bottom section of the magnetic switch. It's still a two-part switch, but this time they added a C-clip in there. Uh, so that way, when you uh, use the locking ring function on this thing, it won't back out your firing button, which is a huge improvement over the original design. All the engravings are really subtle and super smooth, so they don't really uh, you know, bother you when you're running your finger across it. So it's very comfortable in the hand. All right, so I gave you some of the new specs on this device. It's slimmer, it's trimmer, and it's ready to go. Uh, I have my atomizer on here right now, and let's just go ahead and see how she vapes. All right, so here we have the Kindred Mod 1.5 in the little felt bag that it came with. Uh, I think this is a really nice touch that uh, Council Vapor included with it. Um, it kind of helps protect the mod, especially with shipping and everything. You know it's going to be safe, and it, it looks really cool. It's got their website on the back here. I don't know if you can see that. Let's zoom in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it's got their website right there on the back. So. Um, let's just go ahead and take a look at the mod itself. And there you have it, that's the Kindred 1.5 in all its glory. Beautiful engravings all throughout this device, very subtle as well. I'm going to go ahead and take it all apart and we'll go through it piece by piece. All right, so here's the mod all broken down. We have our top cap in 510 connection, our 18650 extender tube, the 18350 tube, and the bottom uh, lock, locking ring slash firing button. So here you can see the upgraded 510 connector. Uh, it has these nice little inlays right here. Uh, it doesn't really provide any airflow underneath the atomizer itself, so if you have something that uses a bottom airflow, uh, it won't be as good on this device as others that do include some sort of bottom airflow design. Uh, so keep that in mind whenever you're selecting your atomizer. They use silver plated connecting pins all throughout this device, which is great. Uh, it eliminates a lot of that voltage drop. As you can see here, here's the reverse threaded uh, adjustment screws. So when you tighten down your Addy, you just tighten down the top screw and then adjust to your battery using this bottom screw here. And these are all really smooth. Uh, came to me in really good shape, so uh, that's a plus. Here you can see the 18650 extension tube. Uh, it's slimmed down a little bit from the previous version. The walls aren't nearly as thick and the device itself is only 22 millimeters in width. And uh, that'll fit really clean with most of your atomizers. Um, and it just gives it an overall more sleek finish to it. The tube itself, the machining, there's really no complaints on my end. Uh, all the threads, buttery smooth, fits in with the uh, standard tube 
really nice and you really can't even see it when it's all put back together and I'll be sure to show you that in just a minute um, this is the 18350 tube with the bottom piece of the magnetic switch or the top piece I should say um, as you can see here pretty similar to the previous uh, design of version 1 uh, standard two-piece magnetic switch which in my mind uh, I think they could have you know done a little bit better of a job as far as making it a little bit more slim and trim and just kind of compressing that all into the bottom portion here but that's just you know my opinion uh, you, you might not think so uh, it does have holes so if your battery starts venting it will be able to release that gas into the bottom portion which I'll show you in just a second uh, the engravings on here are very nice, very subtle. As you can see, my serial number right there, 0581A, and the Council of Vapor logo. And there you go, there's the Kindred logo on the other side. Really intricate, detailed, but very subtle as far as depth, and you know, it's not really overly flashy or anything. So I really like that as well. And here is the firing button which they have added a C-clip in the, the bottom section here so whenever you engage the um, locking mechanism it doesn't automatically push out that screw or that uh, the button and uh, hopefully you can see there's three little holes right there which is for venting gases so any gas that p potentially could be venting from your battery will go down through this piece here and vent right out those holes and it just makes it that much more safe Again, buttery threads, really no complaints on that department. Uh, the throw of the switch is fairly nice. It's not too far of a throw, and I don't believe you can adjust it. Yeah, it doesn't seem like you can adjust the throw on the switch. But overall, I think it's fine. And just like the previous version, it does have these little cutouts here for where your finger can rest when you're firing the mod, and it does fire quite nice with your finger just pressed right in there and hopefully you can see the bottom engraving on the button itself very nice subtle again you know it doesn't really uh, cause you any trouble when you're firing it or anything like that and uh, it's very not really even noticeable when you're using the mod uh, again same de design as the previous version with the little roses on there which it's kinda cool pretty neat um, let's go ahead and put this all together and I'll show you what it looks like here you can see I have the Kindred mod version 1.5 in 18650 mode and even with this extension tube attached it's still a lot shorter than the version 1 and I'm glad they were able to you know reproduce everything that I liked about the version 1 and then put more features into it as like the uh, C-clip in the, the bottom section of the magnetic switch I mean that that really shows that they're listening to advice from reviewers like myself and uh, the, the people you know the little people so good job Council Vapor you know listening to people and actually you know understanding why people need certain features on their mods um, so yeah, let's go ahead and drop this thing down to 18350 mode, and I'll show you the overall size of that. And uh, I will say that I feel like the version 1 hit, might have hit a little bit harder. Uh, that could have to do with the larger 23mm diameter, but it could also just be my imagination. Uh, I feel like this is definitely not for cloud chasing. This is definitely one for, you know, someone that wants something really nice to show off and to bring out and show their friends. Here we see it in 18350 mode, and it's definitely a whole lot smaller. And it, with this mode right here, I mean, you're you're talking about stealth vape. I mean, if you'd put like a shorty atomizer on there or something like that, then you could really get away with rocking this thing in your pocket and not ha really have to worry about. Uh, getting too much attention if you're in public and if you don't want to draw attention to yourself vaping there you go put it in 350 mode and you're set to go and here it is with the Aris Pro dripper on top I did post a picture on my Instagram right when I got these devices uh, just to kinda of show it off a little bit and they look absolutely gorgeous uh, as you can see here the finish from the brush stainless matches all the way through and I really like those brass accents it kinda of brings out the uh, the mod a little bit more and uh, yeah I just think it looks really nice with this this device attached to it and it not, like I just said it's not really a cloud chasing mod it's definitely for your people that just kinda wanna 
be flashy and show something off. And I think this definitely does the trick. And it's pretty hard to see here, but I just wanted to show you that this does wobble a little bit when it's standing up, uh, which can be an issue for some people. Um, I think it's because the button protrudes very, very slightly. Let's see if I can get a shot of that. So you probably can't even see it in this shot right here, but the button protrudes just ever so slightly. And that for me, might end up on the con section here because uh, if your mod is wobbling around you know and you have a glass dripper like the Aris Pro on top uh, you're gonna you're gonna run into some problems there so uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute let's just get some close-ups and we'll go back to the main screen All right, so that was the close-up portion of the video, and let's get into some pros and cons. My first pro is going to be the price. This is listed on Eve eLiquid's website for only $65, and for a serialized authentic mod, I think that is a steal. I mean, some clones can cost more than that, so for that itself, I mean, I'm just going to have to list that under a pro. My second pro is going to have to be the C-clip they added to the switch section. Uh, I think that was a major flaw in the version 1 and they fixed it in the version 2 which I really like so good job on that Council of Vapor. Glad you listened and I'm glad to see that it has been improved. Uh, the third pro is obviously going to be the machining. This thing is absolutely gorgeous from top to bottom. All threads, buttery smooth, really no complaints there. And even when it comes to the two section tube here, I really can't even tell until I put my face like right next to the mod itself and really take a good look at it. So with that, I mean, you can't even see the line or anything like that until you break apart the tube. Uh, so for that, I definitely list that as a pro. Uh, my third pro is going to be the silver plated connections. Just like the version 1, they have all silver plated copper connections throughout this device, which is great. Leads to less voltage drop and increased conductivity, so good job on that. My final pro for this device is definitely going to be the overall size and shape. I'm glad they slimmed it down, trimmed it down, and made this thing a whole lot sleeker and easier to handle. It fits really nice and flush with all my devices. I've got the Still Air clone on top of it now, and this thing looks absolutely gorgeous. It just really gives it a nice finished look, and that's the way I like my mods and Addy's setups to look. So very good job on that, and um, let's move on to the cons. My first con for this device is going to be the lack of airflow underneath the atomizer deck here. Uh, I really wish they would have added just something, maybe even drill out those uh, that design on the top of the 510 connection. Drill it out so that you can get airflow underneath the atomizer. Eliminating that fact out of this mod altogether kind of like reduces the amount of people that could potentially purchase this device. My second con is going to be the two section tube. I've never been a fan of using a dripper with an 18350 battery. Most 18350s can't handle a higher amp draw. So if you are building an RDA, you'd have to build it at, at least like a 1 plus ohm. And uh, for me, that's just not really, you know, uh, something I would like. I mean, f maybe it's different for you guys out there. I'm sure some of you in the comments will say that I'm wrong and I should have mentioned that as a con. But for me personally, I would have liked to have seen uh, maybe shipping it with two separate tubes or three separate tubes for the different battery sizes rather than a break apart tube for using different battery sizes. I realize that would bump up the cost a little bit, but I would actually like to see performance over you know, cost effectiveness of this device. It's already pretty cheap, it's only 65 bucks, so even if the cost jumped up to $100 if they shipped it with three, three separate tubes, uh, I think that would be perfectly fine for me. For an authentic serialized device, that's still pretty cheap. So uh, I'm going to have to mention that as a con. And that's just a personal preference con, so don't really take that as far as a negative aspect of this device. It still definitely hits pretty hard, uh, but I don't think it quite hits as, as hard as the 23mm version 1. 
but it could be subjective. It could be the build that I have on here. So let's just leave it at that. And my third and final con for this device is going to be that slight amount of uh, wiggle when you place your mod down. I mean, if you're using this thing in combination with the Aeris Stripper, which has a glass tube section to it, uh, if that thing falls over, it could potentially break. You know, it could potentially roll off a table or something like that, which would definitely not be good for that device. Um, it's so subtle that you can barely notice it, but... Uh, it's definitely there, and I wish you could at least, you know, adjust the, that screw to adjust the throw or something like that to where you could eliminate that that small amount of play to it. And it just wobbles around whenever you have it on a table, which is not good in my book. And finally, would I have purchased this device if I didn't receive it for free for the purpose of review? And my answer would have to be yes. Uh, I'm on the fence about, you know, maybe saying yes and no. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, this being a $65 authentic mod, I think that is a steal. I think everyone should own one of these things. Um, so definitely give this one a, a look if you're looking into getting a new authentic mod or even your first authentic mod. This would definitely be a good choice. Uh, as far as being an improvement over the version 1, yes, there are certain improvements, but I still feel like they, they could do a few more things that would make this device really shine. So, I mean, hopefully they, they listen again, and maybe w when the version 2 comes out, we'll see something even better. I uh, really want to see what uh, Council of Vapor has as far as, you know, the cloud chasers. You know, you're, this, this device really appeals to someone that wants something very nice and stylish but it doesn't really perform at super low, uh, super low ohms, super low ohm builds. So keep that in mind when you're purchasing this device or if you're considering purchasing this device. Um, my answer is still yes. I still like it and I still think this is a good mod. And uh, yeah, uh, for 65 bucks, you can't go wrong. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, make sure you go check out EV Liquid's website and the Council of Vapor Facebook. The links are right there in the description. Um, leave a comment below and tell me what you think of this device. You know, uh, it's very different, very stylish, and when you used in combination with the Aeris Stripper, I think it looks great. So let me just let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to hit that like button. I'm really happy to say that I just hit 1,900 subscribers, so thank you guys very much for all the support. Uh, so yeah, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Go like my Facebook page as well as follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Don't forget to check out www.spinfuel.com for lots more of my videos as well as Smoke and Joey and the Vapor Trail channel. And as always, vape on.